Ah, that's nicer. Nice, quiet music. Good morning, everyone. It's New York Open. We're about two minutes away from the New York Open. We had a nice London session this morning. When I say nice, I mean uneventful. <laughs> there wasn't much going on uh, from the on, from uh, from the Open standpoint. But a little bit later on, we were able to get, at least I was able to get uh, three trades, two wins, and one break even. But some really great learning lessons too, or teaching moments on mastering uh, trade dynamics, in trade dynamics, and trailing out of positions, as opposed to scaling out of positions, which I'm not, which I'm not actually a big fan of. Um, and I encourage you to watch those videos. There's a mastering break evens, there's another one in trade dynamics, and the break even trade very, even though it wasn't a sexy thing because we took a break even, a lot of really great and important points were made in that video in terms of capital preservation, one of the most important aspects in your trading business. So I hope you get a chance to take a look at that. All uploaded already on YouTube, ready to go in high definition, I do believe. All right, I wanna show you this. This is a little uh, chart I sent off to uh, on, on Twitter this morning showing what happened this morning relative to yesterday. So here's Monday. You'll see the three different sessions. That's Asia on the left and in the middle. We have London and then New York yesterday. And you see the, the big range that we have there throughout the day and this morning this narrow range about i think 80 points one of our members uh, paul a very seasoned uh, trader uh, based in the uk said don't we just love these 80 point ranges here and uh, i think that is about what it what it is yeah kind of looking yeah about 70 80 points in there and now we're starting to see i actually started a couple of minutes early this morning because of what we see happening right now you see that breakout and there's the first candle this is something that i i really i rarely take um, I trade the first candle of the day. This is a time when I actually would do it. I'm not going to do it today. just want to engage the stream here and, and get this thing going. You see that push up, continuing this pre-market move. So you could really get a few points out of there. Again, I'm not going to do it, but if you want to, uh, please feel free to enjoy and uh, take some profit out of that. Nice, It could be a really nice move too, as you can see the, the push up here. Uh, yeah, nicely moving. And so I'm bringing back now the one minute chart as well. Just to remind those who are new, we have a 10 minute chart on the left hand side. We have a one minute chart on the right hand side and that's just about everything that we do here. Very, very simple after many years of trading and having run a very complex uh, technical analysis business over the last many years into, into the fourth decade now, I've really evolved into simplicity and pretty much naked charts. There's a one EMA there on the left hand, on the right hand side, pardon me. The one minute chart that's a 20 ema doesn't matter what period you use so within reason but i'll also take you over periodically to what i call the three sisters it's this uh, screen that you're looking at now it's the nasdaq on the left the dow in the middle and the s p on the far right hand side i'm looking for synchronicity congruency and a possible divergence to get clues as to what the next move might be the blue line you see, the blue horizontal line there, is the London Open from this morning. London Open from this morning. And you will see, we got a mixed bag here. The NASDAQ trading above the London Open. The Dow is trading below, but trying to get back to the London Open. And the S&P is trading just above the London Open. So kind of a mis mixed bag. Um, but all three are trading ab above the New York Open. And that's that building a yellow line is now a dash for now. It will become a line as we move out into the session. Um, you see all three now are trading above that. We had that nice push on the open, as I mentioned, coming out of the gates. Now we've closed that zone back. I'm gonna bring you back to the main screen here. See that, that zone that I had drawn ahead of time? That's already been slammed shut by the first three minutes of this 10 minute candle. That move itself is probably about 60 points. Let me take a look here. It's 40 points, pardon me, uh, depending on how you measure this range. But yeah, 48 points. We're getting up there towards 50 points. Almost <laughs> getting to the amplitude of the entire Asian and London range in one three-minute candle. It looks like we might even push through that. So lots of buying interest coming into this market. I'm not taking anything yet. I'm going to wait for this thing to settle, give me a little more direction. But that was an example of a, a setup, a pre-market setup that I would actually take on the first candle, on the opening ticks of the market. I just didn't do it today because I just wanted to engage you and welcome you here for the live stream. Hopefully you can hear me today. Yesterday I had my microphone muted for the first um, 
for the first nine minutes of the session. So we will see. Just looking at my Telegram group here while we wait for this this candle to uh, uh, to to, uh, to finish up here. See some people on our Telegram are taking positions here right there in the open, and I think they're probably doing fairly well too. If you're on the right side of this, it's nice to see. I keep things pretty conservative here on the stream, although I might be doing slightly different things on my own account as we speak, but uh, I don't want to teach bad habits or dangerous habits here on the stream for those who are relatively new to trading. I know we have some veteran traders who join us here as well, really seasoned traders, uh, high stake traders, and and uh, I can't tell you what that means to me to have support from veterans in this business. I should say fellow veterans since I'm, uh, well, I'm old <laughs> to start with, been around for a while. But look at this thing moving now. Um, uh, it never bothers me, by the way, to let, let it move, go without me, because there's a next move, and there's a next move after that, and so on. Uh, it doesn't, you know, in my early days, in the early couple, two or three years of trading, it would uh, frustrate me that I missed, oh, look at that big candle, I could have been on that. And I re realized very, very soon that it just doesn't matter. What I really don't want to move, uh, miss is a, is a big uh, position trade opportunity. In other words, a bull market in stocks. If you miss out on that, that's a life-changing uh, miss, right? This is not. We're scalping. We're day trading. There'll be another day trade around in the next few minutes. Or the next few hours lately, since it's been so range-bound. It was agonizing for me, at least, and for many of us uh, who, who day trade for during the London session. But we were able to pull out those two wins in one break-even. And the one break even actually almost hit target, but uh, managed that to preserve capital. Again, that video I think is worth watching. Um, mastering the break even trade, I think it's called. Getting a pullback now in the one minute chart. Nice and orderly. That's what I like to see. Notice how that wick pierced the top of that resistance zone, right? We had drawn off over here on the left hand side. Nailed a couple of stops and now it's pulling back. We could see this entire thing reverse. We actually don't know if this is going to be an up day. This could be a down day and a trending day for that matter. Interesting. Remember that big move? Being almost completely reversed now just on that, on those four one minute candles. If you're joining me live, I do hope my microphone is unmuted. It seems to be according to my settings. Yesterday when I was muted for nine minutes, I was really just offering up a world-class introduction to Zerillion trading in uh, nine minutes worth of it. <laughs> That's my own review, of course, because I can't prove it because I was on mute, but all right, still waiting here. We got two and a half, well, called three minutes left in this first candle. Lots happening in that candle. The internals of that thing are quite, uh, quite interesting. I'm just going to send a quick uh, screenshot to my, to my group. One of our members just said, this place is much better than Twitter, by the way. <laughs> she recently joined our Telegram group just about two or three days ago and is really contributing a tremendous amount, uh, sharing charts and ideas, trade ideas, and, 
is an experienced trader as well. We have quite a few experienced veterans, as I mentioned earlier, on our uh, Telegram group. We're all here to to share and, and to grow together even after all these years of being in the markets. One and a half minutes left in this opening 10-minute candle. There's nothing for me here yet. Things are settling a little bit now after that initial flurry, which we often see in the New York Open. The open uh, New York explosion, I sometimes call it. This is where the real volume happens, of course, on, on NASDAQ, Dow, and SPY, since they are North American indices. And this is the North American session. But we still get some really great trades often in the London session on the U.S. indices, because this is a global marketplace now. These things often move very closely together. I also track the DAX uh, and sometimes the FTSE during the London session as well. And um, we'll see very high correlation and synchronicity between those indices. Sometimes one or more of them will lead and the rest will follow. We rarely see a, a really broad divergence and that just goes to show and speaks to this notion of a global tight market. One of our members just said, your charts are teaching me patience, Czar. I really appreciate that. It's, uh, it's something that I want to teach. It's something that I work on every day, even after all these years, fourth, uh, fourth decade now in the markets. Uh, human nature will have us jumping in and jumping out and doing all kinds of things. And very often after the move has happened or the most of the move has happened. We see that over and over again. All right, new candle opening now on the 10 minute. Notice how it closed just below the middle of itself. All right, the first 10 minute candle. So reversing more than 50% of that initial flurry, that impulse move into that resistance zone. Notice how that resistance zone that I had drawn before coming on did in fact act as a rejection point. And we see this happen all morning too in um, in, uh, in the London session and before that in the, in the Asian session. And it's something very powerful about, above, uh, about uh, support and resistance. It's a simple, simple thing, but it's incredible. And so now we potentially range. That opening candle becomes my opening range. And uh, I'll, let me just explain it very simply what I tend to look at here. So that opening 10 minute candle from top to bottom is now my opening range. If, if I don't get, if I don't, if we don't get out of, outside of that, I'm not interested in taking anything until it does. And it needs to be a, uh, a move with conviction. Otherwise there's nothing for me. Sometimes, like in the London session, I'll take you back here, the opening range is bigger than that. You notice this opening candle here in London was here, but my opening range was way back here because I needed to take in this very close support zone that had been formed during the Asian range. Ignoring that would be a silly move, and sure enough it was. Prices moved down, rejected here at those bodies, and then hesitated again later on. So you can see that it would, it would have been a very smart move and was a very smart move to honor that broader range, not just the opening candle. It's a little different now in New York because that opening candle exploded above the, um, the London range, right? So we're in new ground over here until we get way, 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 way back. Uh, it'd be several weeks now, right? Or at least many days. I shouldn't say several weeks unless I zoom back, but I want to watch this real time so I won't take you back there now but you get the idea I'm gonna move this over this marker so you can see here now even if this breaks up above I'm not taking anything yet and I'll tell you why let me make this chart bigger so you can see what I'm looking at when we go over to the left hand side here I've marked these zones there's no arrow going up here and the reason I didn't put an arrow is because it's not clean traffic it's clean ish traffic but these horizontal lines are marking where there have been previous very real rejections. Rejection here, rejection here, rejection here, and then the ultimate rejection here where those with those big uh, wick ups, I would say. And not to be confused with hiccups. Sometimes they are market hiccups, but you get the idea. And now pushing up, trying to get through this initial opening range candle. We'll see if it can do it. But I'm going to be uh, more cautious taking longs just willy-nilly up here in this range, 
given those horizontal lines which represent previous points and recent previous points of rejection. Simple, simple concepts, but this is the way the market moves. Now you'd be shocked if you looked at my charts from a few years ago and these charts now. As I said to one of my friends on Twitter, sometimes our charts can look like a polygraph <laughs> printout. And nothing wrong with that, by the way. I, I love indicators. They, they, they're really neat and uh, they're kind of fun. I just, uh, I like to come back to first principles and understanding price action and what's actually happening inside of these candles. Then we can begin to layer on indicators if it works with our brain's wiring. I sometimes like to throw a VWAP on with, with two standard deviations. Just works with my brain. My brain likes it. It's a it's a pleasant picture for me, and so I can work with that. And if I can extract profits using those tools, then it works for me. There's nothing wrong with it. There's no one indicator that's better than the other one, unless it helps you and assists you in extracting profits from the market. And the entire game of trading is extracting profits from the market by any legal means possible. It might be five points or five pips at a time. It might be a hundred points at a time. Now remember, I've had two winning trades this morning and a break even. And one was, what was it? I think it was 20 some odd points. Another one was uh, 14 or something like that. I can't even remember. It's been a long day. Anyway, let's say it was a total of 30, 30 points. If I took a loss now of 40 points, I could still be making money for the day because those two individual trades are position sized independently based on our multiples. So if I made, say, one or two R on the first trade and one or two R on the second trade, took a break even on the third, I'm now up two to four R. If I lose 40 or 50 or 60 points on one trade now, I'm only down one R. And so I'm still profitable for the day. And I encourage you to think of in position size in terms of R multiples as well and not to get caught up in this point count. And you might be saying, well, but your videos are all showing point counts. I am doing that for now because I'm not sure how, how else to indicate what this trade did. It's considering that everybody who watches has a different way of, of measuring their trades, different way of sizing, um, different size accounts and starting values and so on and so forth. But uh, we'll evolve as we as we continue this. We've only been doing this for about two and a half weeks now. And I may move away from the points. I might, might move to our values instead. Uh, we'll see. Now we're pushing up. We're getting some movement here. I would be waiting for this candle to close. I'm going to clean things up a little bit here on my charts. We'll see if uh, prices reject at this um, this blue line. See if they wick down again. But it certainly looks like the bulls are very much in charge now in the New York session. We took a little breather here on the one minute as we pulled back to the 20. We weren't even able to close below the 20. You see we wicked down, immediately rejected and fired back up again as fresh buying interest came in. And that's all we're doing here. We're riding or surfing the waves of buying and selling interest and pressure. The path of least resistance, as you can see, is up. If I wasn't streaming, I may have taken a, 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 a buy here on that previous candle on the flip above itself. But I think this is a good kind of watching and talking about what's happening here as it unfolds. Interesting open for the first time in, in quite a few days. Lots of nice momentum now. And pretty clean after that first candle. That first candle was 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 kind of uh, you know bipolar a little bit there. But now we're getting a lot of buying interest. So too late for me to enter here. Let's wait for an orderly pullback and see if we can get something. Take a little sip of my coffee here for a moment. So there, there were reasons for, for some trading methodologies to be absolutely be in on this. 
on this uh, long. It's just uh, not my type of an entry. Nice move today. Nice move. Even though I'm, uh, I'm pretty good at controlling my emotions and my impulses, I do look at this and go, oh man, I could have been a part of that. Uh, there's, there's a part of me that will always do that. I mean, this thing has really made a nice push here on the open. 107 points. <laughs> Beautiful move. These moves have been so untrustworthy in the last few sessions that uh, I'm looking for that most certain move. And of course, after the fact, this was a certain move. <laughs> we can't trade on that basis. But for those of you, now we're into the, the uh, third candle. I need a wick down to even consider taking this move. And given the extension, I may even just pass on that one and wait for the reversal trade instead which we'll cover off uh, either here live or on, uh, on the Telegram group. Getting a push down here now. You'll see this thing just blowing through those rejection horizontal lines that I drew. But now we're in between two of them. All right, let's see if this thing drops back or if it can actually push up to that next, that next zone. We'll see here. that gladiator candle that <laughs> that 10 minute candle that was a nice push what are we doing here on the nasdaq overall okay we're up 147 points one and a quarter percent on the nas the um the dow the dow is up they're basically flat only up 54 points 0.16 percent and the um a little bit higher on the on the e-minis the on the s p up uh, three quarters of a point Three quarters of a percentage, but one and a quarter on the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ very much leading the charge here in the futures market at the very least. One of our members is saying extended from that 20 EMA now, the weekly level below 11.550, and that's absolutely true. See how we pushed away from this uh, 20 EMA on the one minute at the very least. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if, if our friend, uh, if, if Damien's, Damien's looking at the, the, the one minute chart on this, but uh, very much extended away. Uh, it would be nice to have that pullback for a, uh, a more solid structure to move into that, that next long position or even consider shorts on a break below and a change of structure. We will see. But that's a great point by one of the uh, members of our Telegram. So lately it's been the waiting game with a range bound market and now it feels funny it feels strange to have to be for me to be in a waiting game on after a gladiator candle like that looks like this wants to push even higher and take us up to that next zone i'm going to hold off on that i'm not uh i think we're a little extended here for my liking and again i'm looking for the most certain move i'm not i'm not here to catch every move as i often say or to catch the whole move I want to. I would like to catch a series of mo most certain moves, and that's how I'm able to 
to grow my account and preserve my capital. Um, but it still does feel less than uh, optimal to be missing a nice big move like that. But that is trading. That's the real game. Kudos to you who have caught a piece of this. And double kudos for to those who caught all of it. <laughs> well done. If you're listening, type into the chat if you can and, and let me let me know what you're doing and what you're thinking. Hopefully um, most of you are not shorting into this. Although it could eventually pay off, but uh, that can be a temptation too when you see a big move like this is to take the short side and say, okay, hold on. This thing has gone too far too fast, right? What goes up must come down. Well, the market can sometimes teach us how to think differently about that in very painful ways. Here comes that push. This would be a structure I would often take, right? This nice uh, uh, strong candle pull back and then awaken the bottom and then a break above here. And I'm not taking this. I just want to going to show you what I'm talking about here just to kind of close that that piece right there that would be a 43 point trade and not taking this myself but it's a legitimate it's a legitimate type of entry if you trust the momentum move here and I, there's no reason not to I guess this thing has moved so aggressively, you could even begin to start thinking about tightening your stop, just you know, contemplating it, uh, looking at the one minute and watching this thing drive. You may consider moving the stop up to this position here under the second last candle on the one minute. And if you're particularly nervous, even moving near break even at this point and taking it from there. If you're very nervous, it could be moving out now for a good 10, 12, 15, 15 point profit. Just be, be done with it. On one more push up, if we break the top of that wick, I would be moving my stop to break even, just locking that thing in and then let the market decide if it's going to give us a, a profit or not. Great sharing on the Telegram group, guys. Appreciate that. Share your charts and and uh, and clear ideas, your clear thoughts, detailed thoughts as to what you're thinking, what you're doing. Ideally, uh, prior to um, the trade playing out, that's the way we can we can all learn together. I personally would have my stop here at break even, like to get taken out. So I always say a very high chance of being taken out of break even. I'm okay with that. I take uh, break evens often. Uh, not lately. We've had you know, we've had a very high win rate of late, um, but that's not going to continue. We've had you know because these momentum pushes in my style of of trading and scalping, it's been beneficial to my style. But that's not always the case. We get into ranging markets. It's a very different ball game. I'll take losses. Uh, you know, I might take even you know 30, 40 percent losses and break even combinations. And um, it can be a grind sometimes. You know, I might do that four or five times in a row and then take a, you know, four or five wins in a row. But you get the idea. Okay, so I would have been stopped out here at break even on this one. 
I didn't take this trade as I mentioned hopefully very clearly I didn't take that one it's an extended move and this whole idea of the extension beyond the 20 EMA is not really an ideal setup for me that earlier one that I mentioned that under normal circumstances I may in fact take you've probably seen me take it on the stream before is this one here this pullback to the 20 the wick down and then um, the body closing above and then the flip of the candle that's kind of the, the trade I like to take and you've seen me do it over and over again if you watch my videos or if you've joined us in the live streams right this is what we do um, but this latter move this later move here that's a purely momentum continuation play and it's not uh, not something I will often do my trades are typically structure and um, and uh, break up ba uh, based in other words the structure being for instance that that uh, orderly pull back towards the 20 EMA again it doesn't have to be 20 but whatever EMA you're using it's that relative deviation and then reconciliation of that deviation uh, based on prior movement in the session All right hopefully that makes sense if it doesn't we'll clarify you can ask me questions in our telegram group or here on chat and uh, give you some more detail on that There it goes that continuation so there's a lot of buying this could be a very interesting day if this becomes a trend day on the upside we will watch this thing cl close near the near the uh, near the high of the day rejection again at that um, remember that blue line we drew the reason we did that was because of that resistance far over to the left right very real reasons for these things and it's amazing how often we see prices react right at those levels notice how that body formed at that line and doing so again just for now and this thing could blast right through remember the market can do whatever it wants we're just trying to put the odds in our favor here we're doing nothing but flipping coins we're flipping a coin wanting it to land on heads in my case I, I always choose heads you could be choosing tails but let's say uh, we always look for heads and what we've done by having a methodology or a system in place is to create a slight edge over time not in any given one trade but over time we have a slight edge so that that coin is slightly weighted to land on heads and we just flip it over and over again applying the system or the edge and over time that coin's going to land more often on heads and when it does land on tails we have another method that reduces the amount that we lose when it lands on tails or minimizes it and that's what we do with dynamic uh, edge shifting like I showed in the two videos this morning it's what we do with with uh, trailing out for instance and things like moving to break even right so hopefully that makes sense and at that point it's a mathematical game trouble is the human mind and the human brain doesn't like playing that game it likes to play different games games that involve lack of control of our impulses right see this thing moving higher now and and that is the entire game of trading once we have our edge down we understand price action just the basics that's all we need um, it now becomes a game that is entirely I mean 100% a mental game, an emotional game. And that will be very hard for for newer and younger traders to uh, to understand or even believe. They become very cynical and skeptical of that notion. And they spend 90% or 100% of their time devising systems, seeking different indicators, uh, moving from one method to another, 
never realizing that the reason many of these methods aren't working for them is because of what's happening between their ears. Not, nothing to do with the system very often. I mean, there are bad systems out there, and if they don't have a back-tested mathematical edge, then they're just useless. So they, they should be dumped, but you get the idea, I hope. All right, this momentum is waning now just a little bit here. I'm going to uh, reset this chart so we can get more perspective and look at that. So this move actually started in the London session. The pre-market participants were gearing up to do this big buying up campaign and nailed it before. And so I started the stream a little bit earlier. I had a sense that this momentum push was going to continue. And I sent that to my um, to my Telegram group. This is going to be a very interesting uh, New York Open, uh, but I also <laughs> I did tell my group that I'm going to stay out of it until the, until the dust settles on the explosion. But there's the uh, there's the explosion. There's the explosion that we're seeing right now, and uh, not a part of it on my on my <laughs> on my point on my uh, side here. And I'm really okay with that. If you've been around for here for a while, and it's only been two and a half weeks, but if you've been around here for a while, you'll hear me say that I, I have no problem missing a move, because it's not it's not missing a move. There's another one. You know, this move will retrace again, and that will be a move, and then after this will be another move. And remembering that to, for me and for most traders, it really shouldn't matter that much what the point gain is or the point loss is. It should be the a percentage of your account. So whether there's this big, beautiful, and this is a beautiful momentum push. Whether that uh, that thing is a hundred and some odd points, what is it here? It's 203 points now from pre-market to um, to where we are now, 214 points. That's massive on the <laughs> on the Nasdaq, but I can make as much money uh, on a on a 20 point push as I can on a 214 point push because my position sizing is different, right? I hope that makes sense. But the human brain will play games with you and say, "Oh, that's the move I needed. That's the sexy one," and it's true. It's a sexy move. But uh, I mean, it depends on what, what you consider a turn on. And if you've been a trader for a while, these things can can get you uh, pretty excited. All right, we're half an hour into this now. We're 36 minutes actually into the session. And given what's already happened, uh, and if you, know, if you know my style of trading, I'm probably not going to take a trade in the next 10 or 20 minutes. So I don't want to keep you uh, here on the live stream. We've had a good chat this morning, even though there was not a sexy trade for me. I'm sure you guys maybe participated in some wonderful uh, opportunities here because there are different styles, right? And there are styles that will take advantage of this and do exceptionally well. But I wouldn't even, I personally wouldn't be taking a reversal here either until there's more structure in, pray, uh, in place and then a technical breakdown of that structure. And that will take a few candles to form. And so I won't keep you on here for that. I think we've had a good chat this morning. I want to thank you for joining me here live. I wish you a fantastic rest of the day. And I hope we can see you in London tomorrow for the London Open live stream or a little bit later on today uh, or New York tomorrow as well as we have met here today. Thanks for your time, guys. Wishing you again that wonderful day and we will talk soon.